All right, hey everybody, this is Rosh, and you are watching Helix Basics. This is a YouTube tutorial series I'm putting together to show new and experienced users how to program their Line 6 Helix. So a little about myself, once again, my name is Rosh. Uh, I build and program guitar rigs out here in the Los Angeles area, as well as uh, remotely online. Um, so uh, some of my clients include Steve Vai, Def Leppard, Melissa Etheridge, Perfect Circle, Maroon 5, Kylie Minogue, Bush, and more. And I want to give back to the Helix community and show some tips and tricks on how to program their Line 6 Helix. Um, if you've been watching this YouTube channel, you are, can probably surmise that uh, I've definitely put out a lot of content for the all the Fractal Audio products, including the FM3, the FM9, and the XFX3. Um, and a thing that a lot of people don't know about me is that I also program all the other modelers out there on the market, including the Kemper, the Quad Cortex, and in this case, the Line 6 Helix. So. Um, there are a lot of best practices that, you know, can transcend between different modelers, a lot of different things that you want to do, uh, some best practices that are going to make, uh, give you the best tones and the most options, uh, whether using the Helix live in the studio at rehearsal at home and all that. So, uh, if you watched the previous video, uh, basically we did a preset from scratch but using the front panel only. So this pre, uh, this tutorial is going to cover a lot of the same ground, but this time we're going to use HX Edit to do the same thing. So here we are in a factory preset, and what we're, we're going to want to do, of course, is navigate to a user set list and a blank user preset. So in this drop-down menu right here, what we can do is we can navigate to any one of the eight set lists that are present on the Helix. Uh, starting with set list number three, we get the user one set list. So we can click here, and then now we have... Uh, basically 32 banks um, of blank presets. I already have a preset saved in the first user preset. So we're gonna select this new preset right here. It is in 01B. I'm gonna just double click that and it's gonna load the preset. Now, as you can see, it is completely blank and this is not a very friendly guitar tone. This is just gonna be direct guitar. Obviously, it sounds terrible. It's not very inspiring to play. You're gonna definitely wanna add some blocks in here. So the first block that you're going to want to add, of course, is an amplifier block or and a cabinet block or some combination of the two. Um, again, Line 6 gives you the option to just have an amp plus cab, which is really great for new users. If you just want to pick an amp and then just have it paired with like a cabinet, that's totally cool too. So what you can do, of course, is you can click here and it's going to give you the next column. And again, this is analogous to the front panel. You have a drop down menu here that you can select the different types of guitar amps. Down here, the guitar and bass are drawing the algorithms from the legacy uh, Line 6 products, and then these are the current ones. So, of course, if you're a bass player, obviously select bass, but in this case, for this tutorial, we are going to be building a preset starting with the guitar. So, um, now due to copyright issues, obviously, Line 6 can't use the name of the exact amps, but there are definitely lists out there that tell you the equivalent. So for example, something like the US double normal, uh, sorry, double normal right here is equivalent to the um, Fender Twin Reverb. And then you have some of these other ones like the Brit are generally going to be you know, analogous to the Marshalls. The Cali is generally analogous to the Mesa Boogie amps and so on and so forth. So what we're gonna do is let's just build like a kind of simple guitar preset. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of the deluxe reverbs, the Fender deluxe reverbs out there. So uh, we're going to select this deluxe uh, normal. And then these two uh, amps right here is just basically uh, modeled after which input you select in a standard Fender deluxe reverb. So if you're familiar with those amps, they have two different inputs. One is a vibrato input and one is a normal input. I prefer the sound from the normal input because there's no bright cap in there. So we're going to select that. And we can now move this amp and cab combination anywhere that we want in the preset. Now, I'll just put it somewhere here. And again, you see that it pairs with a cabinet in a specific position. Um, and you can start there. Um, obviously, moving the position around is going to move the microphone around. So, of course, you can just, if you're unsure of what cabinet to select, the amp and cab pairing is really great for that. So, again, I'm going to just remove that select it one more time, and then we're going to select the deluxe normal. And then now we have an amp and cap sound. So obviously this is a little crunchier than I would like it, and the the drive right here is going to be analogous to the volume knob on the Fender Deluxe Reverb. 
as you turn the volume knob up on the real amp, it's going to start distorting a little bit more, um, as well as getting louder. So you can hear that the amp will do that. And again, that's just the amp like clipping, you know, it's a 22 watt amp. So as you get it to a certain volume, it's just going to be much more distorted. So this would be almost equivalent to seven on the volume knob of a deluxe reverb. And as you get below a certain number, it's just going to basically be a clean sound and turning it all the way down. So right around here in the three o'clock range seems to be pretty good. You get a nice clean sound. But as you can hear, the volume is uh, definitely much lower than it than I'd like. So one of the things that you can do right here is the channel volume allows you to uh, completely adjust the actual output of the amp without affecting the tone. So for example, if we did want to use a distorted sound right here, but it's just too loud, we can, of course, bring the channel volume down and we get to keep the tone as is, but the volume is going to be much friendlier. But in the case of this tutorial, what I actually want to do, of course, is I want to have a clean sound, but I want it to actually be loud enough to be able to play, you know, pretty loud. So you can hear the channel volume allows you to do that. Now, in this particular case, it's a pretty dry kind of sound. Actually, let me just turn this up just a hair. Yeah, right around the mid threes, it seems to be pretty good. Um, and let me just kind of tweak the EQ a little bit. It's a little spiky to my ears. Whoops, I don't want to turn up the mids. I want to actually turn down the treble a little bit. Yeah, right around there seems pretty good. Um, and what you can do now is start adding effects as you wish. So, of course, you can start adding a reverb block. You want to select a blank position right here. And, you know, in the previous video, I didn't really cover this, but uh, in some of my other videos, I definitely talk about the cabinet block a little bit more in depth. Um, you can, of course, start adding low and high cuts. They're off right now. So you can definitely start with, you know, pretty generic instances of 80 hertz and 8,000 hertz. That's usually a pretty good starting point. <laughs> So it's not too boomy, but it still has some sparkle on top. And of course, if it's still too spiky, you can start bringing this, uh, you know, high cut down. And again, this allows you to um, tailor the low end and the high end of the cabinet block um, so that it fits in the mix a little bit better. So we'll just do something like that. Um, and now what we're going to do is select a blank slot right here. And then let's bring in a reverb. As you can see, this is much quicker to do on the HX edit rather than doing on the front panel. But again, some users don't want to deal with a computer situation, which I totally understand. So um, here in the reverb, we have, again, mono, stereo, and legacy. So I'm actually going to pick a stereo reverb. And let's do a dynamic hall. And again, you have all your uh, effects here that you can start um, you know, tweaking with. Um, so of course, let's take a listen. So that's definitely a lot more reverb than I want. I'm going to bring down the decay so it's pretty short. And then, of course, I want to adjust the mix a little bit. It's a little high for my ears and my taste. I just want just a touch of reverb. Yeah, it sounds pretty good right there. Again, just to give it a little bit of space in a room, but nothing too crazy. So now we've just added a reverb. The next step is, of course, let's start adding some overdrive pedals. So maybe you are in a cover band or something you want to have you know, clean and dirty sound. So the cool thing is as you select any of these effects, you can actually kind of hear just maybe the effect at the default stages. So I'm going to go to a blank slot. Again, we want to put the distortion before the amp, not after. Um, and we're going to start, you know, maybe auditioning these. So we'll start here. So uh, I like this Hedgehog D9. This is basically best uh, based off of the you know the Maxon SD9. It's a pretty cool high gain pedal. Um, so with plenty of low end. So what we're going to do is let's start leveling this out. So here's the basic tone. Obviously, it's much quieter than if uh, we were playing the clean sound. 
So what you can do is of course hit this power button right here to bypass and engage it, or you can hit the space bar on your keyboard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start, you know, basically doing the same thing that we all do with our distortion pedals is turning them on or off and then pulling this level slider up and down to try to get a, maybe a balanced volume between both sounds. Okay, it's pretty good right there. Now, this is a lot more gain than I need. Uh, I want this to just kind of be like, maybe just like a generic rock sound. And it's a little bright for my ear, so I'm gonna bring the tone down a little bit. Now, I like my distortions just a hair louder than um, the clean sound. And again, this is because in the real world, usually most of the time you're kicking into a chorus or something and the band's gonna get louder. So I don't want my distortion sound to get lost in the mix either. I, I'm not really a big fan of trying to make them perfectly even in volume. Um, I want them to, I want the overdrives to just be a hair louder, but not too loud. Yeah, it sounds pretty good in my ears. Now, the next step is, of course, we can add a modulation effect. So we're going to select a blank um, slot here. Now, certain modulations sound better after the amp or and certain ones sound better in front of the amp. The cool thing is, instead of ripping apart your traditional analog pedal board to try this, you can just move the uh, modulation effect wherever you want, either before or after. So um, in the previous video, I selected a tremolo. So let's just go with the same thing. Let's do this tremolo right here. Now, I like that sound, but it's a little fast for me. And that's pretty good right there. And again, you can audition by pressing spacebar. Now, the last thing is maybe we want something in between like a full-on distortion sound. Maybe we want something like an overdrive sound. So we can, of course, select another empty slot right here. And um, you know, I'm a big fan of stacking overdrives um, in the real world. Uh, usually the protocol that I try to follow is I go from lower gain to higher gain. So the last pedal in line before it hits the amp is going to be the highest gain possible. Um, you can, of course, experiment. And the cool thing is, again, you're just dragging and dropping between them. So, of course, if I, let's say, just add, uh, you know, something like a Tube Screamer right here, um, the cool thing is you can just click and then you can actually swap places. So the cool thing is the Tube Screamer is right here. You can just swap places with this. And now the Tube Screamer is here and you have the Hedgehog back here. So again, I'm gonna stick with the paradigm that I like where I like to stack overdrives um, in levels of gain. So here is the clean sound. And then here's the Tube Screamer sound. And I'm gonna definitely turn that way up. And I'm going to turn up the gain just a hair, and it's a little dark for my ears, so I'm going to turn up the tone as well. And again, that's more of an overdrive sound, so maybe if I was playing some kind of like Stonesy kind of thing. And then this would be kind of more for like the rock stuff. And of course you can stack. So you have a lot of different options. Now, the last thing that we're going to want to do, of course, is we want to assign all the effects to different foot switches. So um, again, what you can do is you can click each block and then you can start going to this drop down menu where it says bypass and controller assign. So as you can see, there is nothing assigned yet. So if you're looking at the actual unit itself, the switches are in order from, you know, starting from the top row as switch number one and then going from the bottom row at, uh, or the top row goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the cool thing is that you can assign them anywhere. So of course we want to assign maybe this distortion all the way to the bottom right, or I'm sorry, the bottom left. So what we're going to do is we're going to see it says one, two, three, four, five right here. This is the top row of the, uh, of all your foot switches. And then the bottom row starts on seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11. So what you can do is you can um, hit foot switch seven right there. And then now it's going to assign it to the bottom left. And then again, we're going to go to this one and then it's going to 
and then this is the hedgehog d9 and again we're going to assign that to a different foot switch you can see that foot switch number seven is already taken up by the scream 808 the tube screamer so we're going to put the hedgehog right next to it and then i'm going to take this tremolo effect and again go to this drop down menu and assign it to foot switch number nine and then of course if i want to i like to keep the reverbs on in general but again uh if we treat this like it's a guitar pedal we can definitely you know start assigning it to other foot switches so that we can turn it on or off so i will assign it there so the cool thing is you can get kind of a matrix right here of where your effects are assigned on what foot switches and again we want to think of the top row of foot switches as one two three four five you may notice that hey why is number six not present that is used to go between um, stomp and preset slash snapshot mode and then you might be going well where's foot switch number 12 and again that is assigned for tap tempo and tuner right now and again these are the factory defaults so what we're going to do is just stick it with this for now and of course the number one thing is as you're dialing in your preset don't forget to save your work so of course we are going to save the preset and we can uh, put the name up here in any name that you want we'll just call this rosh tutorial I'm going to hit enter and again we can hit save or save preset as um, and of course you have other options as well as of course exporting the preset so if you want to save a copy to your computer you can do the same thing and that's one of the advantages of doing all the editing on HX edit rather than doing it in um, you know on just on the uh, unit itself um, so I definitely always recommend making a backup of these presets that you dial in on your computer so other than that, that's a good place to stop. Again, if you compare this video to the last video, it's going to definitely be much quicker to just dial in a really quick basic preset. Um, so uh, if you guys need any one-on-one -on -one help, by all means, feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, would be happy to set up a either on-site session or a remote session with you. Um, so other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. I'm falling with you. I'm standing with you, God.